Welcome to Make Real Money Podcasting, the weekly series brought to you by the Podcast Business Journal. Here are your hosts, Radio Inc. and Podcast Business Journal editor Ed Ryan and produce your podcast CEO, Tracy DeForge. And hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number two of How to Make Real Money Podcasting. My name is Ed Ryan, and coming to you fresh from Cancun, Mexico, during her vacation is Tracy DeForge. Tracy, how are you? I could not be better. I was just saying before, if I was going to take a break from my vacation, I would want to do my two favorite things, podcasting and talking about making money podcasting. So great. here we are. <laughs> great. Yeah. And your Wi-Fi sounds great and you've got uh, your awesome microphone. So everything is perfect. Uh, it, you take things right along with you wherever you go. Have Mike thing. will travel. Yep. Have yeah. Mike will travel. <laughs> so uh, last week we had on Jason uh, from Supercast and we had a special guest pop in, Jace, uh, Jesse Brown from Canada Land. And this week we have a guest from uh, Advertised Cast, Anthony Savelli. Anthony, how are you? Thanks for coming on. I'm doing great, Ed. Thanks so much for having me. And, and nice to meet you, Tracy, as well. Yes. Nice to put, nice to put the face with the name and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm jealous. I'm not in Cancun today, but that sounds pretty amazing out there. <laughs> it is pretty amazing. If I open those curtains behind me, I yeah. think everyone would really be jealous, but that's all right. We've got important things to talk about today. <laughs> Absolutely. So a Anthony, for, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, what is advertised cast and, uh, what, why should it matter what advertised cast is to podcasters? Yeah. So advertised cast is a marketplace for podcasters to connect with brands and, uh, we basically have a, a large sales team and we work with many, many uh, independent podcasters on uh, just facilitating their monetization journey. Um, our staff works with brands directly and many of the most prominent ad agencies and podcasting. And we just f help facilitate those super organic and engaging podcast partnerships. One of the things that I noticed when I was looking at your site that I think is very exciting for people to know is that podcasters with a minimum of 200 downloads per episode can participate and work with you in Advertise Cast. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the smaller podcasters being able to monetize at that level? I think that's really great for them to be able to participate. Sure. So there, there's a few routes to monetize kind of smaller audiences as low as 200 downloads per episode. And uh, being that Advertised Cast is underneath the Libsyn umbrella, we have access to a lot of different services that can help those kinds of podcasters monetize. Uh, one of them being Glow, which is a subscription and premium model, uh, kind of similar to Patreon, where you can put a special episode behind a paywall and, and uh, use that paywall to drive some revenues from that audience. Um, we also recently announced our programmatic efforts with auto ads uh, through Libsyn as a hosting platform. So I'm sure you've been talking a lot about the programmatic presence in the industry lately. And um, that's another route we take with kind of smaller podcasts. Um, as far as host red baked in type campaigns go that, that we work on with more of those medium to large size podcasts in the 10,000 download plus per episode range. Um, we don't really book as many of those on on those smaller 200 download per episode type shows, um, but it is certainly something for those podcasters to strive to. So, um, Anthony, uh, 200 downloads is, isn't 10,000, which is the number that uh, that Rob always throws out every week, uh, every month with uh, with Elsie, and everybody does. Everybody throws out the 10,000 number. So when but I think a lot of uh, the podcasters are probably in the hundreds. I mean, especially when they're first starting out. So if uh, if they're getting 200, 300, 400, I mean, how much money could they realistically think about making if they're using uh, advertised cast or glow? So it's really hard to to estimate how much you know they could make. It's from a programmatic standpoint, you can apply a standard CPM and, and it may not make the most sense for an audience that has that level of downloads. Uh, working with Glow, you know, it just depends on that level of engagement with the audience. How committed is your audience to spending some money on a monthly basis to get that extra episode? Um, it's going to be all over the place. I, I believe that uh, Glow is charging around 25 cents per subscriber, and that gives the ability to the podcaster to kind of price that premium episode however they'd like. So if you're charging $5 per month it, using Glow as a service, um, and you get 200 of your listeners to tune in every month, you know, that can be a decent amount of revenue. 
Uh, but it's really hard to pinpoint or come up with an estimate um, on those kinds of audiences. I recently saw in the press where you were talking through the average cost per thousand, the CPM. Can you talk through with us the, the what is that average cost per thousand? But also what I liked about the article that I was reading was how it was breaking down the different genres of the podcast as well. Help our listeners who are just starting to learn about CPMs and what does that mean to them and how is what is that average looking like? So the cost per thousand is kind of based on demand for the podcast. You know, when you're working with a, a podcast that's very popular, has a high level of engagement and is regularly sold out with with many sponsors, uh, that's going to drive the CPM up. And today I, I would say a CPM in the 30 to 35 dollar, 30 to 35 per thousand range is fairly high for podcast. Um, traditionally, we've said twenty five dollar CPM is pretty standard. That's average. Um, in times where the economy is kind of pressed a little bit, uh, Q3 this year seems like it's been um, pressed down a little bit. Maybe the average CPM is in the $22 to $23 range. Um, in 2020, during you know the the heat of the the peak of the coronavirus pandemic and scare, um, you know CPMs were pressed down in the $18 to $20 range. So podcasting has its own kind of economy, and, and CPMs are affected based on what's going on with the actual general economy. Um, but on average, I'd say $25 is, is an average CPM. When it comes to genres and formats though, that, that does matter. Um, certain demographics are in higher demand. Um, it's just kind of as how it's always been. Um, typically we see higher CPMs on heavily female skewing content, um, health and wellness type shows, spirituality, um, those kinds of formats do very well. On the male skewing side, we see a lot of higher CPMs with finance and real estate business type shows. So those are really kind of the more buzzword categories that I talk about when it comes to higher CPMs on average. So, Anthony, when a podcaster uses AdvertiseCast and there's programmatic and uh, um, and they decide that they're going to in their in their dashboard, they're going to sign up for revenue. They want to make money. Are these ads going to be uh, smoothly placed within the show? I mean, sometimes you listen to a podcast and all of a sudden an ad pops out of thin air and it it almost interrupts a sentence. So how, how is the transition from content to advertising with advertised cast? Well, that's a great question, Ed. And, and it's kind of difficult. You, know, you can never really you, you can't project what the ramp into an ad is going to look like, you know, when you're working with programmatic platforms like, like Libsyn and a lot of others, there's going to be a variance between what kind of sponsors are plugged on episodes and, and what those ads sound like. So you're not going to have as organic or as much of a smooth transition into the ad as you would with a standard episodic host read ad, like a live live on radio. Um, but you do have the ability to put ad markers in your episodes and kind of establish what, points in the episode, those ads are going live. So you're not going to place those ad markers in the, in the middle of a sentence, in the middle of an interview. Um, you're going to place those markers during a, a break in between segments or when there is some level of pause. So you're not having that kind of just rough, hard stop, random advertisement, and then back into content. Uh, so, but that's also a reason why a lot of, a lot of advert ad salespeople and networks talk about why host red baked in ads are kind of more organic. And in my opinion, it's the kind of the cream of the crop of podcast advertising where you'll see the best results and the highest engagement. Well, I know with producer podcast, when we're working, we are producing our clients and they're taking uh, the dynamic ad insertion or programmatic ads. We always have them integrate a, a segment that they are going to have that ad leading up to. So we coach them through making sure that they are actually teeing up that or asking the guest a question or teeing it up so that when the ad is inserted, that it makes sense that it's going to flow within the content of the show. And I think that's really important to the quality for the listener because like Ed was saying, we don't really want to have like a mid sentence cutoff and the listeners like, what is that? Or have a marker set and then no ad run either. That could also be a little bit disruptive. But one thing I noticed about advertised cast that I think is important to put out is that or point out is that you really have a good level of customer su customer support for your podcasters. That's one of the things that I think is so incredibly beneficial because 
you're lost in a sea of all the things that you're trying to do for your podcast. You may not have a company like ours that can help you. And then I noticed that you have a team of people that if people have questions or they need support, that you're there for the podcasters. Absolutely. And, and our op support customer service team is something we're very proud of at Advertise Cast. Um, one of our, it's kind of an internal mantra, like we, we want to hyper service all of our podcast partners. We're super creator focused and that hyper servicing is, it's the most important thing for us. So we have teams of individuals on our publisher team and ad ops support teams that help service um, all of our ad campaigns and not only work with the brands and the clients we're working with and the agencies, but also answering every question that our creators might have. So that's very important. And Tracy, you mentioned kind of uh, coaching podcasters to create a more of an organic ramp into those those ad breaks for programmatic. I think that's a really important thing that's going to be happening. It's you know it's been happening. It's going to be more of a common effort moving forward as we see programmatic um, advertising spend grow over the next few years here. I mean, I think it's even important if you're even putting your own ads into your podcast, which some people do if they're marketing online courses or events or things like that, they use um, mid-roll spaces to put in their own ads. And if they're not host read ads at that point, you still have to educate the podcaster to be focused on what's in it for the listener, not necessarily what's in it for them. Right. I, t I completely agree. Yeah. And this Many podcasters are, are implementing ads dynamically on an episodic basis. So it sounds like a baked in ad, but it's really dynamically inserted, even though it's it's embedded there. It's not capped. It's going to be on the episode forever. Um, you know, that style of integration kind of trains podcasters to have that organic break into a dynamically inserted ad, you know, like that kind of stages the programmatic um, the programmatic push that we're seeing. You know, that should help organically transition podcasters into that, you know, so that type of format. Anthony, off the off the subject just a little bit here. What is your opinion on how many ads, whether they're host read ads or dynamically inserted ads, should be um in a 30 second podcast? I'm 30 second, uh, a 30 minute podcast and a 60 minute podcast. Where are you seeing the limit is for uh, listeners to be able to handle it before they're fast forwarding through the ads, which is the last thing an advertiser needs? Uh, great question. Uh, so I've always gone off of the, the idea that you don't want to have any more than one sponsor per 15 minutes of content. So if you have a 30 minute episode, you're not going to want to have more than two sponsors on that on that episode. If you're running an hour long, like many, actually like most podcasters are running right around an hour long, um, you're seeing around four mid-roll sponsors being offered. Um, and, and I'm saying mid-roll sponsors. You don't want any more than four interruptions from the content. You can have additional promos on the front end, pre-rolls, or on the back end with post-rolls. Um, those won't affect the content as much, but I've always said no more than one per 15 minutes of content. And the uh, the other, sorry, sorry, Tracy, oh, no. I'll, I'll forget. I'm way older than you, so I'll forget my question. Uh, no worries. So what what uh, what advice do you give podcasters? I mean, somebody signs up. They're you know they're they're in their first few episodes. They're not getting a ton of downloads. They want to make money, but um, uh, you know, are you giving them a level of advice uh, because they're looking for you guys to be the experts at this before they say? I mean, if you're getting into podcasting to make money, I mean that you're probably not going to succeed right off the bat because it's not something you can make money at right away. You have to have build an audience. You have to build a brand, the whole thing. So what is, what is your uh, advice to those podcasters as to well, wait till you get to X number of listens and downloads? Right. I, I wouldn't rush as a kind of newer podcaster that's looking to grow their audience. I wouldn't rush into the host red podcast advertising space. You know, there are some services um, like CPA cost per acquisition type arrangements that you can make where you where you'll make some uh, money on a on a conversion basis like each time there's a conversion you can make a set pre-established amount of revenue um, I wouldn't overcrowd your content with ads until you grow to a certain point where it makes sense for you financially so um, to get there you know it's important to maintain a, a level of cadence you know you want to be releasing at the same time every week um, on the same day, you want your audience to know when that episode's coming out and be ready for it so they can consume it. Um, consider adding additional distribution channels like YouTube. Uh, simulcasts are a huge topic of conversation in the industry these days. And uh, 
ad agencies and brands that have been spinning on podcasting are, are more and more willing to, to spin on YouTube channels and, and uh, multi-channel podcasts. Um, we represent many at AdvertiseCast. So it's kind of an easy way to add some reach to your show. Um, there's a certain viral ability factor with YouTube that you don't get as much in podcasting where, you know, your videos get recommended to people consuming similar content. So it's easy to add audience just by, you know, putting it out there on additional channels. So consistently, consistency with release, adding additional channels is very important and not jumping the gun, not rushing to add ads before it makes sense for you financially, because you don't want to deter your audience from tuning in because you're throwing ads all over the place. Um, you know, when you're still in those kind of early stages, trying to, to build that level of that relationship with the audience. So we, we certainly do coach our podcasters at Advertise Cast. You know, we, we think we're the experts. Um, in our own space. And um, yeah, this is, it's, it's a journey and we're, we're always with the creators from start to finish. Well, we're seeing a lot with advertising agencies and just brands in general who are pivoting ad dollars from what was typical digital advertising, Facebook ads and the, the, you know, maybe even paid search ads and things like that. We're seeing that pivot to podcasting. Why, what do you think is driving the interest in brands spending more dollars? I think the estimated number is um, 4 billion by 2024, something along those lines. What do you think is driving that interest in pivoting those dollars away from traditional digital into podcasting dollars? Yeah, right now we're seeing around 34% annual growth rate in podcasting. You know, it was 1.4 billion in spend last year. We should exceed 2 billion this year. And like you said, four billion by 2024, and hopefully we exceed six billion by 2026. So there's a lot of growth going on here in, in podcasting. Um, I think that the 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 buzzword engagement is really the answer in that you're getting more bang for your buck with podcasters. Um, hosts have a very close relationship with their their audience. Um, the audience trusts the host. So when you have a host endorsing a brand, saying that they actually use it, you know they've tried product, they love their experiences with it. You get a certain level of engagement that drives more of a response from the audience um, with digital advertising um, you may be spending a very low cpm but a lot of that spend just goes out the door you know how can you confirm how how can you confirm a level of engagement when somebody's scrolling through a, a web page and, and may just pass by a digital ad um yeah i just think that the level of engagement in podcasting is really what's it's more so podcasting is making itself known more like podcasting is growing so much and more brands and agencies are learning about how special this type, this platform is. And, uh, you know, they're transitioning experimental budget into podcasting, seeing successful tests and doubling down. So that, that's what I think is happening. So you mentioned glow earlier, um, Anthony, and, um, uh, what I, what I wanted to ask you was, uh, we had, uh, Jesse Brown on from Canada land last week and they're behind a paywall for some of their uh, content now too. What, what is the best number of shows or type of content that's extra that once you're, you know, you've got your podcast and your brand up and rolling and you got some listeners and viewers or uh, what, what, you know, what, what extra content do you think is really going to get those people to throw in the five or $10, how many episodes and how long? Um, it really just varies from show to show. Uh, everybody releases a different number of episodes per month. Um, many release on a weekly basis. In those cases, I'd recommend maybe adding a, an additional fifth episode or some sort of a bonus type episode that isn't exactly the same kind of content you're releasing to the public. Um, you know, I've, I've been listening to Tenderfoot TV's Up and Vanished recently, and, and I uh, see there's the main episodes where, you know, it's episode one, episode two, episode three. And then in between, there's Q and A's with certain guests, um, certain right. subjects involved. Those are the kinds of episodes I think would would drive your listeners to go to behind the paywall to spend the extra money to really dive deeper into the content. You know, what am I missing? These are the special bonus episodes that you know the general public won't be able to see. So I don't know about the number of episodes that would drive. It would make sense. But um, on average, I'd say at least one and maybe two. You don't want to throw too much content on there and, and overwhelm yourself as a creator. 
Yeah, I think it's all about access too, right? It's like, what kind of access can you get outside of what's uploaded for free? And then to your point, maybe it is the Q&A or maybe it's behind the scenes footage that you're not going to be able to hear, especially in like an up and vanish situation. Maybe it's case reports or just something that is going to attract that listener to be like, hey, that's worth an extra five, 10, $25 for me to be able to get the real, if you're a true crime, total passionate, um, you know, I guess, obsessive fan, you're going to want to hear all of the details and you can get those through the glow type of a platform for certain. Um, when you are planning for the, to ramp up for, you know, what is a tip that you would give to a podcaster? I know we've talked about making sure you release consistently. We've talked about um, making sure that you're on different platforms. I think, you know, one of the things that I would love for you to provide is what is a tip for somebody who they're, they're about to hit that mark where getting big brand advertising is right for them. They're graduating, so to speak, into that next level of being able to connect with the bigger brands. What is a tip that you would give to and to a podcaster who wanted to start connecting with those brands and building those relationships to monetize their show? That's a great question. Um, I, I would say, first of all, create create rates for your, your show, you know, establish the rates that you want to go forward with to brands. And more importantly, build out a bit of a media kit for your show. Build a one sheet, something that's kind of tangible where a buyer or an agency rep or client in house can review information and, and it's attractive, makes your show stand out and really kind of shows top to bottom what your, your show is about. Um, also it's important to maintain rates, you know, know, you, know, your worth, hold your rates and, and pitch that consistently to, to the agencies you're working with. Um, you know, you don't want to kind of vary off of any price point too far. Um, it kind of, it hurts buyer confidence, um, you know, when they see lower rates out there in the marketplace. Um, but really working with a, a network like advertise cast, and there's many other, you know, excellent companies out there that help. Uh, help podcasters monetize working with uh, those that have really strong relationships and, and know who to reach out to and how to treat different types of content. That's going to really help set your show, your show's monetization journey up for success. Um, you know, like I said earlier, like we are the experts, we know who to reach out to uh, for different formats, different demographics. And uh, we're really going to help guide, be able to help guide hosts and producers on that, on that monetization journey. And uh, Anthony, I love your your screen there behind you. What uh, what is uh, what do you, what, what would you call that uh, behind you? That screen. So this is just a blue wall behind me right now. I've got a uh, <laughs> I've moved into my living room over here because it's a little bit more professional looking than my office. But I've got like a chandelier that makes this like. Candle, <laughs> candle you, you don't have a you don't have a window with a picture of Cancun, Mexico behind you in your house. <laughs> I, wish. I wish I was out there. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Anthony, how uh, can people, uh, Tracy, you have any other questions? For I you? do have one okay, more question. That I, I wanted to circle back with something that you said earlier in regards to podcasters being on different platforms and brands being interested in the YouTube platform. I wanted to, you know, I, I'm an audio fanatic. I'm, I always admit I'm biased towards audio. Tell me where, where do you think the direction is going with audio podcasts and now video podcasts and brands wanting to purchase audio only or audio and video? And is video an imperative part of podcasters marketing strategy now? I wouldn't say it's an imperative part of the journey, but it, it really could add value, you know, adding another channel can add a ton of value, not only for the show, as far as the audience goes, like just the growth side of it, but you're able to integrate produced graphics on screen, pinned comments, um, notes in the description uh, that help drive those viewers to check out a client's website and just click on the redirect. Um, there's some limitations as well. You know, attribution and podcasting is very important right now. Um, chartable pod sites and many others have been kind of a uh, most commonly thrown around over the last couple of years in around, uh, I, re I just met, I was at podcast movement. I met with a very large agency in podcasting and they told me that around 50% of their ad campaigns are being tracked with attribution right now. Um, they're onboarding a lot of clients right now as well with, with the growth we're seeing in the industry and around 80% of the new clients that they're onboarding are requesting for attribution. So um, I would say that 
over the next couple of years, we'll see the majority of podcast partnerships being tracked by attribution partners, um, meaning they need to be audio only shows. Uh, so on the other side of it, many of these same agencies are establishing their own YouTube departments and they're working with brands that are specifically seeking out YouTube content. Um, we're even seeing buy teams for the same brands through agencies be split. There's a podcast group and there's a YouTube group. So um, YouTube's very, it's, it's very loud right now in the industry. Um, most, not most brands, but many, many brands are accepting YouTube shows and YouTube simulcasts um, for their standard kind of podcast efforts. Um, you know, and we'll just we'll continue to see both platforms grow. YouTube itself is also growing in, in the podcasting area. Um, the last few weeks, YouTube released or, or kind of released their beta podcasts page. So um, I attended Podcast Movement Evolutions in L.A. earlier this year, and there was a very big presentation by YouTube on their efforts to grow podcasting and grow in, in this channel as well. So I think we're going to continue seeing YouTube itself um, making efforts to to be more accommodating to podcasters. So, Anthony, is what you're saying right now, uh, agencies are not there's no way for uh, a podcaster to say I've got X number of downloads and you can't combine that with the YouTube viewership or the Facebook viewership or Twitter right now. There's just they're just taking the audio downloads and using using that as kind of the ratings. There's no way that, that I mean. You don't really know if somebody's watching a full show and seeing the ad either on YouTube. Is there a tracking mechanism for that yet where you know they saw the ad? Not that you really know they didn't fast forward past the ad on the audio version. So it seems like there's a lot of work that needs to be done for attribution. There, there is. and it, But I, I wouldn't say that they're not buying YouTube. You know, they've, they've been buying YouTube simulcast for, for over two years now, um, from my experience. Um, but... That level of attribution, um, like it does require audio downloads. It, you know, it's implemented on a on an RSS feed and a hosting platform for podcasts. Um, really, it's important for networks and sales staff to to notify the buyers and the clients of what percentage of audience on average comes from YouTube feed, what percentage comes from the audio feed, and just set those expectations up front to ensure that they're aware that if they're adding attribution to a simulcast feed, you know, they might only be seeing 50% of the results um, from that campaign, just because they're only able to track the audio portion of the campaign. If that All makes right. sense. So. Anthony, we thank you so much for coming on. How can people get in touch with advertise cast? Uh, if they, if they uh, want to learn more information or, or sign up with you. Yep. Please check out our website. It's advertisecast.com and there's submission forms on there to get in touch with our staff. Um, we're also all available on LinkedIn. So, you know, feel free to shoot me, myself or, or any of our sales reps a note, um, you know, if you have any questions with us. And thanks so much, Ed and Tracy. It's, this has been fun. Thanks a lot, Anthony. Thank have a great you. one. Take care. You too. Thank you. All right. One, Tracy, one of the things I wanted to mention on uh, like our weekend show that I do with my wife is uh, it's, it's simulcast on like this is on YouTube and Facebook. We we have a sponsor, a golf cart sponsor, and we have the video of the sponsor that we just play. Most of the time, it's because I'm old and I have to run to the bathroom. Uh, so it's just, <laughs> it's just 60 second. And so, I, you know, but the ad has audio and video. So the people that are watching uh, the show are seeing the video and it's also playing in the audio version, which what what I use a stream yard. So stream yard records the audio records the video. And so I can download the audio and then up, upload it to Libsyn, which is uh, what I use for a hosting platform. So, I mean, that has nothing to do with the attribution part of it, but you know, if you're doing a show and you do need a break, uh, you can get uh, a recorded ad from one of your clients and not only do a uh, host red ads and you're sitting there doing one host red after another, you can kind of right. break it up, which, which is nice to have if you have a client that can, produce an ad like that. Yeah, definitely. Well, and the other thing that that does, and then we're always really focused on helping people. If you're doing audio and video, you need to really, when you're talking to your audio listeners, you need to remember that if they can't see it, then they need to be able to understand and feel included about what's right. going on with it. So I love that what you're saying is the video plays, but the audio plays as well. And, and ideally they still feel connected and they don't feel like that they're missing out on something because that can be alienating and, and then people, listeners get frustrated. So it is, there, it is important. 
there is a couple of uh, shows that I listen to on my phone and uh, I hear, you know, they're doing a video version of the podcast because you can hear them say, I'm going to show you this video now. And it's, you can't, obviously you can't see it. You're listening to it on Apple or, or whatever. So, I mean, right. it is important to, to make sure that you share as much of the content that, as you can with the people that are listening. Um, one of the things that we were talking about before we started today was, you know, um, defining different ways. I, I think podcasters need to find several um, different revenue streams, whether it's something like with, with advertised cast or, or you're, you're out selling your own ads or something. But Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting introduced me to something called Buy Me a Coffee. And what it is, is, it, you know, um, it's an e to me, things have to be easy for your listeners and for your viewers and for the people that follow you. The easier you can make the link, the easier you can make the click through, get them to the PayPal um, uh, link or get them to, to their credit card, whatever it is, Venmo, however you're taking their money, it has to be easy. And buy me a coffee does something that's really easy. They for five dollars, uh, you can buy the host one coffee or. They have five cups of coffee across the screen where you can buy them five cups of coffee. And it's something that I send out in our newsletter every Tuesday and Friday. If you think the work that we're doing is worth something and you want to donate and it always results in some kind of uh, donation uh, from the audience. So I think that's a, another cool way that podcasters can incorporate it. Again, you don't want to make it come across like you're begging. You don't want to open your show by saying we need money or I need money. You just want to. They put the work in and then offer them ways to um, uh, to to donate to you or to reward you for the work that you're doing. Well, and I think that's one of the great things about uh, what Anthony was saying about advertisers and brands are really seeing the power of the connection between the listener and the host. And the listeners are viewers, readers, subscribers, followers. They are understanding that creating content is not free for the host who's doing it and they want to continue to get that level of good quality content so they're willing to buy the five dollar ten dollar twenty five dollar cup of coffee so that they can continue to get back the level of quality content that they're used to getting and keep their host going which i thought was so great um yeah. with canada land last week when he was talking about he was literally going to have to shut down his show if he did not start getting income to be produced to offset his costs and then that's how he started out and he got an even bigger response than he was expecting and then ended up yep. building out a 15 show network from the support that he got so you just have to start somewhere and i think that's where people really need to get comfortable is just start where you are and then grow from there Right. And we're going to try and find the CEO of Buy Me a Coffee and uh, and and get him or her on the show. I've got a note into Dave Jackson. If we can, it would be great to have somebody like that, uh, that kind of vendor on the show to explain how it works and explain how easy it is. And re real quick, another idea is something that I saw on a uh, weekly newsletter that comes out um, from Sanibel, Sanibel, Florida. And that is every time they send their newsletter out, they have a box in the right hand column that says support local journalism. And again, there's a five dollar box, a ten dollar box, a fifteen dollar box, whatever, you know, the person thinks the value was of that newsletter. It's one click right to PayPal. And then it goes right into the account of uh, of, of uh, the Sanibel um, newspaper. And so, again, it's it's not a um, uh, um a pushy way to ask money. It's just sitting there. And if you're reading a story that you like, you have a chance to donate to the, uh, the newspaper there. It is there. And, um, so that's again, another way. And you want to create all these different ways that you can, cause sometimes somebody's going to want to give you $500. So <laughs> you don't want to just ask for $15. For $5. You, right. Exactly. Yeah, you want to make, uh, you know, that's, that's probably when you get on your show and say, you know, if you think the show is worth a hundred or 200 or 500, here's the Venmo account and here's a PayPal link right now. Um, so you're not limiting to see sometimes when you do the buy me a coffee thing, you think, am I limiting people to just $5 donation? Should there be like, buy me a, a coffee house for, you know, for $500 or a thousand dollars. I'm like, that. Buy, that me, buy me a car. Right. right that, um, that we can, uh, well, 
and I think Anthony made a good point that I want to highlight too for podcasters is that know your worth. And so it's it's not that asking for the five dollars, ten dollars, twenty five dollars is not knowing your worth. But when you're starting to have those those bigger conversations about sponsorships, and you don't, this is not necessarily meaning that you've already gotten up to that ten thousand downloads. This means that you're maybe graduated from the buy me a coffee or adding to it but you are talking to maybe a vendor that you work with that you have a great relationship or something like that. Like you want to be able to know your worth because half of the challenge in asking for dollars or negotiating ad rates for your podcast is the confidence. And we always say that, you know, knowledge is power, but confidence is your superpower. And it's that confidence that comes behind the pricing is that what gets you those larger prices. So you know, know your audience, do polls, do surveys, capture testimonials, do whatever it takes to get your own confidence level up as a podcaster so that when you're having those conversations, you can talk about the level of engagement that comes along with your audience. And that's what they're looking for. Right. And always remember, there's 100% chance that you're going to get $0 if you never ask. If if you do not ask, the answer is always no. (laughs) Right, right. So next week, we have the co-host of Breaking Points. um, And I know I'm going to butcher his names, Sagar and Jetty. I hope I said that right. We'll get it fixed when he's on next week. On September 22nd, we have the CEO of Soundstack. uh, And we have guests lined up all the way through October the 20th. I know you're on vacation in Cancun, Mexico. So thank you for uh, coming on during your vacation. We appreciate your time, Tracy. And uh, let's make some money. Yep, let's make some money podcasting. Thanks, Ed, and I'll see you next week. All right, Tracy DeForge, everybody. My name is Ed Ryan, the host of Radio Inc., or maybe even the editor of Radio Inc., and the uh, editor of the Podcast Business Journal. And we'll be back again uh, next week with another episode of How to Make Real Money Podcasting. Have yourself a great day.